Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today, we're going to focus on the female reproductive system. But before I get into the details of this lesson, I want to ask a very serious question. Are there any differences between the male and the female reproductive systems? Think about it. The answer is yes. Do you know any of these differences? Well, there is a vast difference. If you didn't get this joke, then you need to visit the male reproductive system attached at the end screen. Today we're going to focus on some general structures relating to the female reproductive system. These structures include the ovary, the oviduct, the uterus, the cervix, and the vagina. Before I go into these structures, let us look at the general structures of the female reproductive system. We have the ovary, we have ovarian ligament, we have the fimbriae, we have the oviduct, otherwise called the fallopian tube, we have the fundus, and the fundus is the uppermost part of the uterus. We have the uterus, otherwise called the womb. And in the uterus, we have some walls. Two of them include the endometrium, which is the inner wall. And we have the myometrium, which is the middle wall. We have the cervix and the vagina. Now, let's look at the general parts or structures that we mentioned earlier. Let's start with the ovary. The, ov the ovary, the ovaries are very, very important structures. One, because they produce hormones. The hormones that are produced by the ovaries include estrogen. Estrogen is important in repairing the wall of the uterus and also important in bringing about secondary sexual characteristics in females when they reach puberty. The ovaries are also important in producing egg cells. Now let's look at this ovary. Notice there is an egg cell. At this stage, it is called the follicle, which is an immature egg. The follicle is what is responsible in producing estrogen. The follicle will eventually develop and become mature when it mature enough the egg will be released by a process called ovulation so the egg will be released into the oviduct the remaining portion of the egg after ovulation is called corpus luteum or the yellow body this yellow body is what will be responsible in secreting progesterone now the oviduct the oviduct is a very important structure because one, it connects the ovary to the uterus. It is also serves as a channel for the passage of egg cells. It is a site for fertilization, which means it is the area where the egg and the sperm cell meet and fuse together forming the zygote. The uterus. The uterus is a very important pear-shaped structure. The uterus has three main walls. You have the inner wall, which is called the endometrium. The endometrium is important for implantation. In fact, the endometrium is what will be shed if there is no fertilized egg. And the shedding of that wall is called menstruation or period. You have the middle wall, which is called the myometrium. So notice M for middle. So the myometrium is important in expanding to accommodate pregnancy. The myometrium is elastic in nature. 
So it will expand as the fetus develops. The perimetrium, notice the word peri as in perimeter. So it is the outermost layer or wall of the uterus. The perimetrium is important because it secretes a lubricating fluid. This lubricating fluid is important in reducing friction between the uterus and the pelvic area. The uterus is the place where fertilized egg is being implanted. As mentioned, implantation takes place in the endometrium, the innermost wall. So therefore, it hoses the fertilized egg for developmental purpose. The uterus is also important because it nourishes and nurtures the fertilized egg as it develops into the fetus. In fact, what will happen in the uterus, you'll have the placenta being formed. The placenta will be connected to the fetus by an umbilical cord. The placenta that will form in the uterus will be serving as a filtering organ that will filter substances from the mother and send them into the fetus that are needed for development. These are going to more details when I'm looking at fertilization and pregnancy. The cervix. The cervix is very unique and very, very important. The cervix is also called the neck of the womb. So I want to notice the location of the cervix. It is right between the uterus and the vagina. So it is a bridge between the cervix, between the uterus and the vagina. Now the cervix is important in directing menstrual flow towards the vagina. So as the endometrium, which is the inner wall, breaks down, those segments or parts will be directed towards the, towards the vagina, which will eventually pass out of the body. The cervix also plays an integral role in directing the sperm cells towards the uterus. So as sperms deposit in the vagina, the cervix will help to direct these passage in of the sperm cell into the uterus and these sperm cells will eventually end up in the fallopian tube, hopefully trying to fertilize an egg. The cervix also plays a protective role in that it protects the uterus from the external environment. In fact, during pregnancy, there is what they call a mucus plug that is being formed at the cervix. This mucus plug is antibacterial in nature because it prevents bacteria and other foreign objects from entering the uterus. So it protects the developing fetus from any germs and diseases. So it's play, it plays a very important role in doing that. Additionally, on a daily basis, a female will release mucus that will eventually be called discharge because it will mix with other substances that will tend to clean the vagina on a daily basis by removing any bacteria or any foreign objects. The cervix also helps in holding the fetus into the uterus. So while a female is being pregnant, the cervix will help to keep the fetus inside of the uterus. However, at the time of birth or the act of giving birth, the cervix will dilate approximately 10 centimeters to accommodate the passaging of the fetus or the baby. Now the vagina. The vagina is what you call the birth canal because that is the area where the baby will passage through to meet the external environment, meeting its parents. The vagina is important in receiving the penis during sexual intercourse. The vagina acts 
as a depository for semen. So this is the area, the place where semen will be deposited after they are being, after the sperm cells are being ejaculated. The vagina, as mentioned, it serves as a passageway for birth. Now at the end of the lesson, and I'm really hoping to see you in the next lesson, so stay safe until we meet again.